right, folks, Jermaine Farrell in the house with the WFXR Sports sit down on WFXRTV.com. And I have the privilege of talking to a national champion winning the Natty on Sunday over there in uh, deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> deep in the heart first, of Texas. That's right. First year as an assistant coach for the Stanford Cardinal, former Virginia Tech women's basketball player, assistant coach at Virginia Tech, former Blacksburg High School basketball star, and of course, assistant coach at Radford, the great and awesome Brittany Anderson. What's up, B.A.? How are you? How are you? All of that all jumbled together just has me like, I've been, I've been a lot of places. <laughs> Good deal. I got to ask you, first of all, and, and I know here we are two days later, you're a national champion. I mean, I I, how does it feel to, to win the Natty in your first year as an assistant at Stanford? It hit me this morning. I didn't, everything happened so fast. It was a whirlwind. I remember the confetti. I remember getting quiet. Um, I remember the shot going up that she took. Um, I remember our players running to each other and hugging each other. And I was like, oh my gosh, we won. But from there, everything was like a whirlwind after that. Um, it, it's been, it's been a long 48 hours. <laughs> I'm still like recovering. I'm trying to stay up like during the day and go to sleep at night. Um, last night was the first night I slept in the last two days. Um, but it's just a, it's a feeling you really can't describe. And I've talked to people who had won in the past. Um, and it's just something where they're just like, I don't, you just, you're excited, but you can't really explain it, but you're excited. You, you're, you're the team, you know, obviously Stanford is one of the blue bloods when you talk about women's college basketball, but this year you, you ladies went through something probably no one would ever have gone through the travel, not even playing at home that much. I guess winning a national champion has to make it satisfying, but just talk about the year you, you guys, have, you ladies have had because you all were road warriors all year. It was in the beginning. Um, I honestly was like, are we going to make it through the season? Is this season going to, because I didn't think the NCAA tournament, there's, you don't think about something being canceled of that magnitude last year. Um, what happened and when the season started I was like are we going to make it through the season is this something that's going to happen are we going to get to the end um, but as time kind of went on um, and our restrictions here in the county changed um, they were Tar told them their middle name need to be flexible and they need to be as flexible as possible um, and, and just in telling them that um, it, it came down to how bad do you want to play basketball do you want to play this season do you want to do this for each other and our motto became all in um, that's something that they said that they never even practiced, um, and they meant it. Um, and Tara told them what it meant, meant to say that, um, and they had to be there for each other. A big part of a huge, huge part of it is, is them. Um, they were able to stick together, regardless of what we had, um, regardless of what we had going on, regardless if it was like a Zoom. I know they were kind of on edge about the whole Zoom situation because they were like, okay, what do we get on the Zoom to say? Um, but they stuck it out together. And honestly, I would have never, somebody would have told me it would have ended like this when we first started and not being able to play at home and then going on the road and everything that, um, as far as DoorDash and Uber Eats and everything they had um, to endure as far as classes being online, you're on Zoom, um, and there's still no in-person classes here, everything is on Zoom. So just as far as that, managing that, the quarantine um, of different, going to different cities, having to do certain things the protocol changes in each city that we had gone to. So it just, it just kind of was just like, we made it to the end and it's here. And I was just kind of like replaying a lot in my mind. It was, it was a bumpy road, but I will say they held on to each other through every bump. And they just, we just kind of were like, if they, Tar told them, if you want to play this season, this is what you all will have to do. And when things change, we have to change with them. And they did. Now, I got to ask you this sort of sidebar question. Did you save any of the confetti? Did you put it in a jar? Did you <laughs> save any of the confetti? Because when I went and covered UVA winning the national championship of Minneapolis, I put some of that confetti in multiple jars, gave one to my mom, one to my brother, and I kept one for myself as, as a memento. Did you save any of the confetti? I know you got some of it. I didn't. I didn't. And I didn't even think about that. Somebody should have told me that. Um, our sports information director did. I didn't save any of it. Um, I took um, as many pictures as I possibly could. Uh, my mom and dad were there. Um, my mom was there the entire time, even when we weren't playing just in San Antonio. My dad went back and forth. Um, so they took a lot of pictures, but I didn't. I should have. I wish you would have told me that before all of this went down. Well, I mean, between me <laughs> and I think you guys 
Well, I shouldn't say it like that. But I didn't realize. I I didn't think about it either. But I remember, and here's why I remember that. Kevin E. Barton, one of our former sports people out here, she's in Vegas now. She, when she went to the Super Bowl, covered a Super Bowl. It was, it was uh, where, uh, you know, Atlanta blew the lead against New England. She got in Houston. She got a jar and put all the confetti in it. She saved it for herself. So it was one of those things, too. And I said, okay, if this happens, I'm going to save it. So I, I, I did that. So shame on me for not telling you that. So I'll know next year when y'all try to repeat. Hey, okay. get the confetti. <laughs> Bring it. Hey, go back to that. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of stuff came out of the women's side of the tournament, the conditions and all that. From your perspective, you know, you know, just talk about some of the conditions, because obviously what was brought out, the men's tournament, it seemed like they were at a gold's gym and your you guys facilities were kind of like, say, you were in someone's garage working out. And and not only that, you know, even the floors, I mean, they didn't give custom floors like the men do versus the women. You know, and obviously this brings to light the equality between the men's tournament and the women's tournament. I mean, I'll give props to ESPN and ABC for really promoting it. I, I kind of wish they would have put the women's Final Four on ABC sort of on a network level. I mean, everybody's got ESPN, but not everybody's got ESPN. But just from your perspective, all those things that circulated that, and then your know, Coach Barnes over at Arizona and, and her situation with breastfeeding and all these things, it was such a whirlwind down there in those for women's issues and women's rights and women's equality. Um, it was, to, to be honest with you, it was one of those things where the weight room situation, it didn't really hit me the differences until I got back to my room and kind of was able to like look at social media and you see different things. And then from that came other issues. Um, we, our team, they were going to speak speak out about it. Um, and I just kind of, I was in shock. Honestly, I was in shock. Um, we had to keep the main thing, the main thing, which was making it all the way to the end. Um, but I think it just goes to show that this next generation of young women are not going to be quiet about anything. They're not afraid to speak up. But I also think that if people are paying attention, investing in women is not a bad thing. Not as bad as what people think it is. And as a black woman in feeling like you are in a situation where you have to help promote, help these women, young women promote different things and issues and help them make sure they're saying the right thing. I think with these young women, it, it is this next generation is like, they're just not going to be quiet. Right. And rightfully so. Um, I, the food situation, um, it got better as time went on, but it's a shame that some you have to speak out about. The weight room, it got better. Was it comparable to what the men had? No, it wasn't. But it's a shame you have to speak out. I think the thing that kind of stuck out to me, and I didn't notice know this, and I didn't really pay pay attention, the um, usage of March Madness um, that the men are allowed to use and women are not. And then they pointed out the flooring and how those things were. Um, it's a shame. I think if you invest in women, um, you could be very successful. I think we saw that um, just in doing the right thing in the state of Georgia. Just that whole situation. Um, I just, it is sad. It's something that we are going to have to continue to speak out about. It's not going to go away. Um, it's not something that's going to be fixed overnight. Um, people are going to have to be open to thinking a different way. Um, but as a Black woman, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it gets tiring. Sometimes it gets exhausting because you feel like you always have to say something. Um, but my motivation is I'm saying something for my niece who's six years old. I'm saying something for my sister who's younger than me, because these people that are, are young women that are coming behind you, um, somebody said something on my behalf and we have to continue to speak out and it might not see, you might not see change that day. It'll help the next generation. Um, but I think it, it is sad and it's very, um, for me, it was heart wrenching just to, just to see some of this stuff, it's just like, so you really didn't care or you really thought they weren't going to say anything. You thought everybody's just going to be quiet and just take it for what it was. So it, 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 is, it was eye-opening for me. Um, and so much so, I think this pandemic has done um, a lot of damage to this country as far as deaths. It's done, done a lot of damage as far as businesses. It's done a lot of damage just as far as like our world being able to function as a whole. Um, but one of the blessings that came out of it um, is talking about women's the issues that women have to deal with um compared to the issues that men may not have to deal with 
Um, it also brought up some racial things as well um, that are kind of in your face and you can't hide from it because it's there. When our strength coach posted that picture, I didn't think that it would spread like that, how it did. And that sucker took off and a lot of people got a hold of it and it was quick. Um, and then they had to speak out instead of had to speak out, make a statement. So just, I think one of the positive things from this pandemic, um, if there is anything positive from it is just that we've had to slow down and you, these things are in your face. You see these things, these are the issues that we have and you have to, you, you have to do something about it because people just aren't just going to let it go. Um, and this, the younger generation, like I was looking at some of our seniors and juniors and I was like, you all get it. You all get it. There was a point in time where people were afraid to say anything. It's just like, oh, let me just, okay, I'll deal with this. But they don't, they, I shouldn't say they don't care. They care enough to say something on behalf of themselves and other teammates that they have. Can I tell you another thing? I thought the biggest joke was the swag bags because I'm looking at the men's swag bag. That looked like Boardwalk and Park Place. The women's swag bag looked like Baltic and Mediterranean Avenue. You get what, one deodorant and a bottle of, of uh, shampoo uh, you know, fem feminine product, one feminine product. It was Guys, get a Don it. Tossin book, a t-shirt, bottles, all of that. That just yeah. like a happy meal to me. <laughs> God. Yeah, I was joking that was, with. That's oh. what really struck for me too. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, yeah, that, that was that to me. I would have been insulted by that swag bag. To be honest. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of one of those things where it's like you have to. I was joking with our video coordinator um, in her SID. I was like, I have nine bottles of Suave body wash. Like I have nine. Like that's how many bottles I have from all the stuff they put in there. It was one of those things where it's like, here, you. This is what we gave you. But did you not think that people were going to post what they got and then other people post what they, and then and it's like, wait, the men got this and the women got this, the turns going on at the same time. So I don't, I don't think much thought went into it on our behalf. And I hope moving forward, there'll be more thought into it. Now, the way the tournament was played, would you like to see it kind of set up like that or kind of go back to, because usually your higher seeds, they host in pods. Or would you like some like the men do? The men had tournament in, in sites, or would you like it in one site, like they had kind of in that one area? How, how would you like to see the tournament in the future? If, if it was um, Rick Anderson had a wand, magic wand, if I had a magic wand, um, I would allow the days in between games like they had in the past for each round. Um, because the turnaround from the elite eight to the final four playing that it was quick. Um, I would still allow that same time. I go back and forth. I think that if you do what you're supposed to do as far as playing and winning the games you're supposed to win and you earn that seed, I think you should be able to play at home. But I also go back to the neutral site part of it because playing at a neutral site brings different fans out. It brings your fans and it might be, let's say we're playing in, um, let's say Arizona or something like that. You're going to have some people in Arizona who's like, well, let's go see Stanford play or whoever play because they'll, be, they'll be able to see more in person. So I go back and forth, but I think I would um, prefer playing at home the first round and then move the regional somewhere else and then go from there. Um, but I, I go back and forth. It honestly, being in that bubble and going from place to place, I felt like I was at an AAU tournament or a high school camp like all over again. <laughs> you had flashbacks. <laughs> I had some flashbacks. Now, now you, you mentioned Arizona, and obviously we have to talk about one of your former players in Trinity Batiste, former Hokie player, transferred out to Arizona. And you're obviously you guys got the W, but just talk about that moment, because obviously you're elated, but I'm sure you really felt bad for Trinity in that circumstance because she was one of your players, you know, back in the day. I felt bad for her uh, in the in the situation because I went to the game like somebody has to win, like somebody's going to lose. And we had beat them twice. And I know they really, really, really wanted to beat us. Um, and I get that. I understand that. But just after the game, I just I just had to tell her um, I gave her a hug. We, I, when I saw her during the season, I wasn't able to give her a hug just because of COVID protocol and all that stuff. So I gave her a hug and I just told her to keep her head high. She never I'm pretty sure. She, I didn't, and I know she didn't. She went to Arizona and how it ended as far as making it to the national championship game. I'm pretty sure she, she had no idea um, and making it that far, but I just told her to be proud of her journey. Um, she's been different places. She's been through a lot. Um, I still talk to her um, to this day after uh, she left Virginia Tech. I was, I was upset. I was bothered just because it hurt me to see her go. Um, I enjoyed being around her. 
Um, I know sometimes you, you have players where you're like, I need a break. She wasn't one of those players. I enjoyed being around her. Um, she wanted to grow. She wanted to learn. She wanted to get better. Um, she was a, a real and honest player about maybe something she's going through or how she felt in different situations. Um, and we, we got pretty close. And she, when she left, um, I just told her, I mean, I was disappointed. I was hurt. But I told her, I'll always be here for you. Anything you need, you ever want to talk, um, you ever want to vent, anything like that, I'll always be here for you. Um, and she checked on me throughout the season. I checked on her throughout the season um, just to see, just to see how each other were doing. But she just, after the game, I just had to tell her, let this fuel you. Um, somebody had to win the game. Um, yes, I wanted to win the game, but it hurt me to see her crying like that. Um, and through, I told her just through it all, you, you've achieved way more than anybody probably ever thought she would achieve, but let it fuel you to do whatever you want to do next. And then I saw her in the hotel the next morning as we were leaving. Um, and she just, she told me she was appreciative of everything I did. She saw me as more than a coach. Um, and I see her as more than somebody who just, I just coach that you keep in touch with. Cause I think she's going to do some really big things. She's very passionate about, um, strength and conditioning, just being in the business. Um, there's a lot she has to learn. She's open to learning all of that. Um, but she she enjoyed her time um, at Arizona. And I was just like, as long as you're happy, that's that I, that's all I want is you to be happy and be okay with what, what you did and the, you know, the choice that you made. Um, but it, it hurt me when she said she was leaving Virginia Tech. I was upset, but then I left and this was like, what can I say? I can't say anything anymore. <laughs> I know that. I mean, you know, that that's some, some interesting stuff right there. So, I mean, it's just, like I said, it, you know, when I look back and I say, wow, you know, I, I covered these, these two young ladies, you know, one's, someone's going to leave in a situation happy, someone's going to leave sad. And I was torn, you know, and I was really rooting for both to do well, because it's hard for me to have a rooting interest in two people. But it's the other way, if it was like, say, if you guys were playing, you know, someone else, uh -huh. It wouldn't matter much, but when you when you covered people that you're tight with and you respect, then it makes it hard. But again, like you said, someone's got to win, yeah. someone's got to lose, mm -hmm. and let's face facts deep down, you'd rather be on the winning side <laughs> than the losing side. It's not personal. What, what, yeah. what, I, I remember watching this in a movie. Uh, I think I think it was in New Jack City. <laughs> I think Wesley Snipes said, "It's not personal; it's just business." <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, so, so, I mean, how do you celebrate? What do you, I mean, I guess y'all couldn't really go out and do much, but how do you celebrate winning a natty or do you just, or, I mean, what do you, what do you, now that the season's over, I mean, what do you do? Do you get a little break or do you, you go into the recruiting trail and what do you, what do you guys do now? So after the game, um, they allowed our players to see their families. They kind of like had a family room. Um, so we did a boat ride first. Um, we did the, like the river walk boat ride. And then we went to um, this room to see our family. So we hung out with our family after that. By the time everybody got back to the room, it was about midnight. Um, <laughs> and it was just like, hey, what do I do? Do I pack? Do I lay down? Do I go to sleep? And everybody, I just kind of sat there and watched TV. Um, so it was one of those things where it's like, okay, what are you, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm probably gonna treat myself this weekend. I'm gonna go get a dinner somewhere, um, a steak somewhere. Um, and just kind of just sit and take it all in. And then you're back to, you are back to recruiting. You're back to recruiting. You're back to um, figuring out what you have to do um, as far as trying to get back to where um, you just finished last year. But we, we are in the spring quarter, second week of the spring quarter. So some have academic um, classes. Um, some have more than most, some loaded up in the spring. Um, so it's just kind of like have some classes and they have some workouts. But we, um, I don't know if recruiting is going to open as far as like being able to go out on the road. So it's a lot of Zooms and stuff still. Was it just me? I mean, you all were a number one seed. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was kind of like, oh, by the way, there's Stanford over there. But I heard like the Yukons, the South Carolinas, the Baylors. I didn't mm -hmm. really hear much. And even other teams that were lower seed. No one said anything about Stanford. And it's like, oh, by the way, Stanford's in the final or Stanford is there. I mean, it, did that kind of feel good to kind of fly, fly, fly under the radar a little bit to say, hey, look, you know, we're here now. Start from the bottom, now we're here. I mean, you know, that had to have a good feeling because 
no one ever, re- no one really talked about Stanford winning it in women's basketball. They were talking about those other suspects. Um, it, it felt good because you feel like you don't have the spotlight on you um, the entire time. And so they're not watching your every move. Um, so it's, it was, our, the players on our team, they didn't see it or feel any way about it. I think we just kind of like the, what we took on about it is just like the less people talk about us, the less pressure that we have. And then it was just like, okay, here we're at the final four. So it wasn't, it wasn't, um, I will say this, cause I remember you asked me this question as far as like conferences and stuff. I think we talked about that the last time. Right. I wish the PAC 12 network was available on the East coast right. um, because you have a, pow- a conferences in the power five that is different. I think all the conferences are different, um, but the Pac-12 is, is just different as a conference. But we actually people, get the Pac-12 network out here. We can you know, it's just, the women's basketball is just different. It, it's a mixture of a whole bunch of conferences and one as far as like the type of player. Um, so it's just one of those things where like we kind of, I kind of took on, I was just like, okay, it's a Pac-12 and not a lot of people see it. So I get it, I understand. Because I didn't have, I didn't have access to it unless I bought it um, when I was living on the East Coast. So. Right. We just kind of took it in stride. They didn't, our players never complained about it, not one time. It seemed like they, even they talked more about Arizona than they did Stanford. It, it mm-hmm. just seemed like there were bigger storylines than mm-hmm. Stanford. And we're talking about Stanford, like it's their blue blood. Stanford, you think of women's basketball, Stanford is on, is on that Mount Rushmore of teams and programs. But I swear, I didn't hear much about Stanford until, oh, they're in a the championship game. And <laughs> And I know Coach Anderson, she's out there. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to pay attention. <laughs> There's Stanford there because I even shame on me for not really realizing that they were a number one seed. And, and it was just funny. Like, but, but like you said, it doesn't bother you. Hey, we, we don't care. Mm-hmm. Hey, you, you'll talk about us when we lift the trophy and cut the yeah. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, you have Tara, you know, Tara Vanderbeer, you know, an, an Olympic – championship coach and you know the most winning national coach. champions oh so, by the yeah. way we have her yeah yeah it was they didn't it didn't bother her much they didn't say anything about it i was waiting for us, them to say something about it they didn't say anything about it well i tell you one thing coach i am so proud of you and i'm ecstatic and i'm excited for you and and like i said you know like i said when you left you know felt bad that you left you know and i miss you seeing you on the sideline but hey you went into Natty, you can write your own tickets. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I miss um, I miss Southwest Virginia. Uh, it is it is a very unique place. Um, I'm sure I'll be back to visit sometime. Um, but I, I do miss um, just, just the area as a whole. It's a very unique place. Our players always, they used to ask me, they always used to ask like, cause the weather was nice here and we got to January, February, they're like, well, what would it be like at Virginia Tech? I'm like, oh, it'd be colder, it'd be snowing. And they always wanted to know they haven't seen it. And one of the players was like, well, what is it like there? I was like, it's a very unique place. It's a very unique place. Um, it's a place that you have to keep going back to, keep going back to, keep going back to. And every time you go back, it grows on you. Um, but I do, I do miss, um, I do miss seeing you on the sideline, working hard. Right. We're trying. I mean, we, <laughs> hey, we we try. Hey, we we just trying to. We trying to go one and zero every. <laughs> I'm like, hey, we try to go one and zero, baby. <laughs> we try to go one and zero every game. But you know, but yeah, every you know every show we trying to go one and zero. So you know, I got. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I'm so proud of you. And um, like I said, hey, you're a national champion, and they can never ever take that away from. <laughs> True. What did Beyonce say? If you like it, put a ring on it. They're going to put a <laughs> ring on your finger. <laughs> yes, they will. They will. But thank you very much. Thank, I never would have imagined. I just moved across the country in a pandemic. Um, you question yourself a lot. Like, did I make the right decision? I don't know if I made the right decision. Um, I left a place that I loved. I came out here. And it's just kind of like one of those things, like, the time was right to make the move. And I just kind of rolled with it. So. God was looking after you, so congratulations. Absolutely, coach. every day. <laughs> Brittany Anderson, assistant coach of the reigning national champions of women's college basketball, the Stanford Cardinal. Congratulations, coach, and thanks for being on WFSR Sports. Sit down on WFSRTV.com. Thank you for having me.